What's up guys, it's Brandon Flash. Today you're joining me in a very special vehicle. This is a Lucid Air Dream Edition. And in this video, I'm going to be giving you a full walkthrough of the 34 inch instrument panel, as well as the infotainment system. And you're gonna explore it as I explore it for the first time. Before we get started, this video would not have been possible without the support of Charged Automotive in Lincoln, Nebraska. They're the Midwest's largest all-electric car dealership, and 95% of their sales are actually shipped out of state. So even if you're not in Nebraska, feel free to check out their website, chargedautomotive.com, and that way you can see what vehicles they have in the inventory. Like I said, we're going to be exploring from the left to the right in this Lucid Air Dream Edition. We're going to be starting with some of these quick controls over here. We've got your charge port door right there. Lock and unlock. It makes a nice little thump when you press the lock button. Got your window lock right here. I do really appreciate that they have this little panel right here just for your quick controls. This kind of feels like a larger version of a Tycon instrument panel of sorts. Got your defrost front and rear auto lights, which I think most people will probably leave their vehicle on. Your fog lights right here. Wipers, I'm not going to use those, just being that we've got a nice and clean windshield. No reason to mess that up. But you do have auto low and auto high, so that way you have a little bit of a preference whether you want it to be a little bit more aggressive or not and then you have two intermittent settings as well. And moving to the actual instrument panel in the more traditional sense, uh, I did pr press my foot on the brake and that's why you had that startup sound. And let's walk through some of these menus here. Again, you're exploring this with me for the first time. So I'm not 100% sure the controls here. Definitely not a touch screen. And moving forward here, the car is on and we're onto the instrument panel here. We do have our gear selectors here. So that's how you put it in drive. Park is at the end versus up. Do you see the backup camera come up there as well? You can also switch to a front camera, which is pretty slick. And neutral is halfway down, just like a Tesla. And we do have a seatbelt indicator there as well. And let's see if I can figure out how to cycle through some of these menus here. Maybe it's Tesla style where you press and hold. That is a great question. Let's see here. Doesn't appear that you can cycle through these, um, but let's see if it changes. I just changed the drive modes here. So as far as I can tell, you can't really change this. I could be wrong though. I looked in the owner's manual on the pilot display, as they call it, and it does not appear that you can change anything on this instrument panel screen, or as Lucid calls it, the glass cockpit. Uh, but you do get your warning messages on here. You do have a little bit of a trip meter there as well. And let's move over to the crown jewel of this vehicle, which is the center infotainment stack or as Lucid calls it, the pilot panel. And as I mentioned, you are discovering this with me as we go. So you've got a home button over here. You've got a navigation button over here on the right side that is loading. And you do see that that popped up on both sides here. Uh, so let's explore that a little bit. So we're in Lincoln, Nebraska. Let's go to charging. There's an Electrify America not too far from here. Let's see if that pulls up. So is there a filter button? Now that is the question. So that's just sorting. So it does show you if it's DC fast or if it's just J1772. And it tells you how many stalls and let's see if it shows you live status. So it does pull from charge point and it will show you live status, it appears. So right now we're seeing all these charge points. I suspect most of these are at dealerships or hotels. Let's see if the Electrify America is in here. I hope it is. 
I know it's over here ish. I think it's 25 on the. Nope, it doesn't appear to be 25. Maybe it's 24. Nope, that's Jason's. That's charge point as well. So I must say, it's very interesting. I'm not seeing the Electrify America on here, which should be the highest priority. This vehicle does include three years of free Electrify America, similar to the Taycan or the Volkswagen ID4, not that that's at all a comparable vehicle. Uh, this does feel pretty responsive, which is good. Supports double tap to zoom. And again, let's tr see if we can find the Electrify America on here with search. So we'll go back. Uh, so suggested items here, food and drink, charging, parking, shopping, hotel, medical. But let's do Electrify America. Keyboard seems pretty good. Uh, okay, so it does pull up here, uh, Electrify America Lincoln, that's the one we were thinking. But interestingly enough, it doesn't show any live data as far as um, charging information. Okay, so I was actually turned up. This is oriented kind of strange. So let's go on the charging menu again, because I was disoriented, and I was looking in the wrong place apparently, which would make sense why it wasn't showing up. So it's actually over here-ish. And again, it doesn't show up. That's really strange that Electrify America, the network that's essentially partnered with this car, doesn't show up on the car. So, interesting. But let's see how it does with just a short route here, if it gives you an, electri if it gives you an estimate for arrival. So we'll hit go. I think it's only like six miles. 8.4 miles, so you've got your turn by turn up here. Um, so your right, next turn here, we're sitting inside, so that kind of throws it off. And then we've got our arrival time, minutes, distance. So you have your full list of directions down here. And let's see, details. I don't see an arrival estimate, which is kind of interesting. Something I would kind of expect on a car of this caliber. Uh, let's try a little bit longer route and see if it will actually route us through chargers. So, end trip. Uh, let's just say New York. Mistype, but it's still understood, so that's promising. Let's hit go and see what happens. I really have no idea what it's going to do, if it supports route planning, uh, wasn't very promising with the Electrify America's not showing up, but it did put us through chargers. Only four stops to get all the way to New York. So let's go details and see where it wants us to stop to see what those stations are. So is there any way for me to view what these stations are? So it shows a lightning bolt on the map, so that's promising. But I don't see any way to actually see what those are. see here. So Casey's Geneseo, Illinois, I assume, but let's see. So it doesn't tell us what we'll arrive there with. It does tell us a charge time, 32 minutes, so that must be a 300, or at least 150 kilowatt station. Uh, 16 minutes at this one, 22 minutes there, and 10 minutes there. So these must all be Electrify America stations or those charge times wouldn't be that short unless there are other stations that happen to be 800 volt high output. But it's really interesting the lack of data here. Uh, I don't see any way to view the charging station data here. It is possible I'm missing something, but I am trying all the reasonable things I feel like. Let's try long pressing here. Nope, swiping, long pressing, none of those things seem to work. Let's just try this again with another destination. Let's say um, uh, 
Beverly Hills. Since there's a Lucid store there. Apparently I can't type. So Beverly Hills, California. Let's see what happens. We'll hit go. So it looks like we've got six stops to get to Beverly Hills. Uh, makes sense with the elevation there in Colorado to have two stops there. Uh, that's actually, I've stopped at some of these stations. I mean, yeah, these are, those are the stations I would go to. So these are all Walmarts. These are definitely all Electrify Americas because I happen to know this route fairly well. Um, but it's very frustrating that it doesn't tell you any of that information. But we've got 5 minutes, 14 minutes, 15 minutes, 23 minutes, 16 minutes, 14 minutes. That's just nutty as far as charge times. I wish I had a car with this fast of charging. Um, but let's move on here from out of navigation. Um, we're going to just go down these buttons here. We've got a media button here. Uh, so it's starting to play radio first, but we've got AM, FM, Bluetooth, Spotify, Tidal, TuneIn, iHeartRadio. Pretty reasonable. Um, so you can actually shift things between the screens with that button there, as you saw there. So that pushes it between the screens. Or you can pull it down, which is also kind of cool. So definitely a slick integration of media there. Phone. I don't have my phone connected, but... That should be pretty standard, I think. Uh, let's go to the buttons up here. So we've got this button here. Those are your driver profiles. So that didn't actually bring us anywhere, which is interesting. You can add new home links. Apparently you can do up to 15 home links on, um, on a Lucid, which... I think Lucid knows their target audience here. They might actually use all 15 home link options. You can connect via Bluetooth. You can turn it on there. We're not going to do that at this exact moment. And Wi-Fi for connectivity. And again, we don't need to connect to Wi-Fi here. Um, but you've got your time here. Tapping on that doesn't do anything. Tapping on the temperature doesn't do anything. And that's totally fine. We'll go back to home. And then you do have your shortcuts here. You can set up a home address, work address. I know it's probably a little bit hard to tell here uh, from the angle, but these are actually kind of set up, so that way when you're looking straight on the steering wheel, they're not blocked and they're kind of contoured to the edge of the steering wheel, which I think is a pretty slick integration. So we're going to start here on the home screen, uh, which is the car icon here in the bottom left. So here you have kind of your general everyday things, I would say. Uh, you've got your openings up here, so you can open charge port, front trunk, uh, you've got your window shade in the rear, you've got your trunk, uh, both the front front trunk and the rear trunk are power open and close, so that's pretty nice, you've got a child lock, window lock, and master lock, makes sense. You do have seat controls here, you can control both the passenger and the driver, there are standard controls on the side of the seat, um, I do have an interior walk through either up ahead of this or after this, so be sure to subscribe if you're not uh, to see that. I'll show you kind of a full more physical features tour of the inside of this vehicle. But here you have all the different positions and ways you can move the seat. So you can move it forward, backward, move it up and down, recline the back, you can tilt the cushion, move the lumbar up and down, back and forward got your backrest width so it's very customizable so if you're a bigger person you can move it outward if you're a smaller person you can move it inward thigh support so it has a BMW style uh, sliding front bit of the seat so that you have thigh support even if you're taller and have longer thighs and you can even move the headrest powered so pretty slick as someone that's six foot three a lot of seats don't fit me well so I certainly appreciate all these different uh, options to make it as customizable as possible and you can save all these different things to a driver profile it does have face recognition so that way you can actually have it change profiles automatically we'll move along here along the top bar again 
we'll go to the massage function. Uh, I did sample the deep massage, felt great. Not going to put that on while we're recording here because it does make a little bit of noise, which is actually probably one of the loudest things in the cabin here. But you have a rolling massage. To kind of, it actually animates what it will do on the screen here, which is super cool. You can adjust the intensity as well. Unwind is a vibrate massage, I believe. And then kind of tingles all around. Wave seems to be basically the same as rolling. I don't see much difference there. Maybe reversed. Uh, and stretch is probably going to yep, pull, kind of pull you open, essentially. Uh, and then deep massage, I would assume, is all around the whole time. And that's on both the passenger and the driver's seat. Um, so you have both options here. As you can see, the screen is really responsive. I like that a lot. Moving on to themes. Uh, so you've got different colors here, and it will adjust some of the ambient lighting in the car. You don't really have fully customizable ambient lighting, which I think is a little bit unfortunate. But you're not really targeting the same kind of audience like a Mini Cooper would be, or an ID4 with um, the fully customizable full RGB lights. So I think this makes sense. Uh, you can adjust the intensity of the theme, and that actually changes on all these screens. You can't see all of it, and it does change some of the ambient lighting as well. And all of them are modeled after kind of different California lightscapes of sorts. And you can even turn these themes on or off if you want. Moving on to charging. So this one is fully charged. To my knowledge, Lucid uses a rated range display, um, similar to Tesla, where it's a static calculation rather than a guessometer based on prior driving for that display. Uh, this is a Dream Edition performance, so that 432 miles does make sense. Uh, looks like we are fully charged, as far as I can tell, or maybe about 95%, I think. You can open your charge port from here. Let's see how it displays that taking a little while there. Interesting. So charge port is open. There we go. Uh, you can start preconditioning. I believe that will precondition back. Okay, so it actually explains it here. Before you start preconditioning, shortens charge time. Start 20 minutes before fast charging. Preconditioning may reduce remaining range, which makes sense. It's using power to heat the battery. And you can still plug in while preconditioning. Also makes sense. It will just use the Electrify America or other DC fast charger to precondition as it's charging and then ramp up it's really interesting that they show an electrify america station on the screen but don't have them on the navigation or at least not all of them on the navigation it, interesting integration there so i'm not going to do that right now we are inside it's probably loud and those are all the options along the top of the screen here from the car menu on the bottom left here so let's move on to the climate control screen so now we tap that fan icon. We've got quite a few buttons up here. You've got a master on off, air conditioning, uh, recirc auto. We've got your front defrost, rear defrost. Again, those are just like what we saw on the left side of the instrument panel. This appears to be, okay, so this keeps the cabin on. It's, this is like keep climate on in a Tesla or dog mode without the screen display. So this just keeps your cabin temperature maintained. So if you're going into a store and it's freezing out, you can keep your car warm. If you're going into a store and it's 115 degrees out in Arizona, which is probably where a lot of these will be, being that they're based in Arizona, or at least built in Arizona, and it will stay on for 45 minutes, and it will automatically shut off if the battery drops below 50 miles of range, which, rough calculation, that puts you around 10% or so, depending on the exact trim of your Lucid Air. So we're not going to turn that on. Um, so you can have it automatically condition the seats and steering wheel for increased comfort and enhanced vehicle efficiency. So I think it will just adapt the heating and cooling seats uh, as well as the heated steering wheel. So that way, if you turn on the heater high, it also will turn on your heated seats. Or if you crank the air conditioning, it will also cool your seats. At least that's how I would imagine it functions. Uh, here you've got your different temperature, you've got your fan functions, both uh, passenger and driver. 
Uh, you've got your different defrost where you want the air pointed. You've got your heated seat. You can actually have it be just the back or just the bottom if you want. So tapping it turns that off. And you've got three different levels. You've got cooled seats. I'm actually really impressed that they're able to have these split for cooling seats because those are just air ducts. And that seems really effective. My back is cool pretty much immediately. Got a heated steering wheel, which is, interestingly enough, only one level, not three levels like the heated seats. And now we have a rear button here as well. Uh, so all three seats in the rear are heated. So you've got those there. Uh, looks like the center back is not heated, which does make sense. It does have a fold-down um, console of sorts with a ski pass-through. So if you get stuck in the middle, you're going to have a cold back. But you can turn off the rear climate if you want or put it on auto. You can adjust the fan and temperature right there. I'm going to turn that off just to keep the fans down and now let's move on to the settings screen here so we have the about screen here it's interesting that it kind of the air logo overlaps the software version seems like a little bit of a miss there from a ux perspective but this is on the latest software and it's on s21.8 or 211029.1547 i'm not entirely sure which is like the actual version number and it's interesting, this is number 26 of the Dream Editions, which are limited to 520 uh, units, but the VIN is in the 1500, so I think that's kind of interesting. You can set up your Lucid Air profile, so that way you can link keys, home and work destinations, all that fun stuff. Applications. So this is where you can link your Amazon account, as well as iHeartRadio, Pocket Cast, Spotify, Tidal, TuneIn, um, whatever services you use to integrate with the car. Got an audio button here so you can adjust your equalizer. Probably not necessary to turn that up that much in my opinion, but I haven't tried out the stereo yet to have a good idea of how it works. I would imagine it's pretty incredible from how much Lucid talks about it. Here you've got your connectivity settings. So you have uh, Wi-Fi you can connect to uh, different Wi-Fi networks, so when you're at home, it can connect that way. Uh, you can connect to Bluetooth. Home link, again, like I mentioned up there, you can connect up to 15 different home links. And here you have just data sharing, standard legal mumbo-jumbo, if you want Lucid to have your user data or not. Uh, you can adjust your driver displays. You can actually lock the rear display, so we'll move back there as well. That one's pretty basic. But that's could be nice if you're doing like high-end Uber Lyft, I guess. But you might want to leave that on. I don't know. Um, maybe with kids, just so they don't mess with it. That's probably the more likely function there. You've got a screen cleaning mode, so you can clean all the different screens. All of them went black. And press and hold to exit. This looks just like Tesla's function of screen clean mode. And moving on to Dream Drive, which is Lucid's driver assistance functions. Um, it's kind of interesting you can't turn some of these on. So for whatever reason, lane departure protection, speed limit alert, and cruising speed update alert are blacked out. So I wonder if those are just not functional yet from software-wise. At least as of recording, it's uh, November 22nd, 2021 here. So you do have a distracted driver warning, so it uses the driver camera to monitor you and see if you seem distracted. Drowsy driver warning, kind of same thing there. Traffic drive-off alert. Okay, so that's kind of nice if you're sitting at a stoplight or something and then cars ahead of you move, it will alert you. Again, that's also grayed out. Blind spot warning, you can have it be audio and visual, so that's kind of slick. Blind spot display. Uh, so if you turn on your turn signal, so let's just see here. Yep, so it'll it'll pop up there. You can kind of see it there when you turn on the turn signal. Also, you can see the 360 view here. That 
is cool, the surround view. So we're inside, so it throws it off a little bit. It's not really intended for this many things around you, I think. It's more for outside. Though I must say, it's showing a silver lucid air, and this is a white lucid air. So, interesting bit there. And you can actually click on individual cameras to see specific views, which is kind of cool. Tap on these different cameras to see their different views. There are a lot of cameras on this car. So, that's pretty slick. And then you do have an auto park function here, so you have to fasten seatbelts to begin searching, and it's not going to find a parking spot in here either. Uh, and then you can actually switch forward or backward cameras up here. And I think with them having the charge port on the left front, it's very helpful to have uh, the front camera. And you can actually zoom. That's I've never seen that before on a backup camera. That's pretty slick. Um, but back to this here, so blind spot display, like I did there when I turned on the turn signal, I'll show you that side camera for either side, depending on your turn signal. And collision protection. So includes a forward collision warning and front and rear automatic emergency braking. Front collision warning sensitivity can be customized to early, normal, or late, and will apply the brakes if a collision is imminent. So that isn't functional currently either. Cross traffic protection, also not functional currently. Uh, warns you and activates automatic emergency braking whenever there is a risk of collision from cross traffic. If disabled, cross traffic protection must be manually re-enabled. So you would use that if you're backing out of a parking space and someone's coming up and you can't really see them. It'll stop for you. There's radar in the rear. And auto park wheel curb assist. So this isn't what you would think it is with how many Tesla owners curb their wheels. Um, but this is actually to turn the wheel kind of like if you're in San Francisco, I think would probably be the target audience here where if you're parking on a hill, you turn your wheel. So that way in case the car rolls, which hopefully on an electric car doesn't, um, that that way it will actually turn the wheel for you when you park. Park comfort braking. Not entirely sure what that is. Uh, I would imagine that probably smooths out your uh, very low speed braking. Um, if you know what that is, please comment down below. I'm actually kind of curious. And park distance warning. So that's just park distance control like cars have had for many years. So nothing too crazy there, but it does have a lot of ultrasonic sensors around it. And moving on to vehicle. So you've got trip information here. So this is actually pretty comprehensive. Uh, so the car's done 90 miles, used 113 kilowatt hour, 0.8 miles per kilowatt hour. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, someone's been romping on it or it was just sitting at low speed and getting a lot of climate use. That's the more likely situation here. Uh, and you can actually cycle what shows on the driver's center display. So you can have since last charge, trip A or trip B. I would really like a way to have all of them or to cycle through them with the steering wheel controls so that's a suggestion there for you lucid but you can reset those trips and safety and security so you have a shock and tilt alert so that's kind of like a car alarm essentially so if someone's pushing on it or if someone lifts it up with a rollback tow truck or something you'll get an alert on your phone and you can also uh, choose whether you get just a push notification on your phone or if the alarm also goes off so those are all the settings there, and here we have that parking view again, so you can tap that at any time, and you can switch those views. And just like that. And now we're in the rear of the Lucid Air, so we've got a couple different functions here. Um, so let's go back to the main screen. So you've got sunshade and climate. So sunshade, extend rear sunshade, so you can hear that coming up. And it shows a little demonstration there. Again, I'll walk through that on the full interior walkthrough, and you can stow the rear sunshade as well. And we'll go back to the home screen here. So you actually just tap that rather than swiping it. And you've got climate, 
and you basically have a mini version of what we saw on the front infotainment display. You've got your heated seats and you've got your climate. Turn that on, auto, auto, set your temperature and you can adjust your airflow right there. And we'll turn that off. And then you also have actual like little capacitive buttons for the uh, heated seats. Hopefully you enjoyed that very thorough walkthrough of all the different screens in this Lucid Air Dream Edition. If you have any questions, please comment down below. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. If you want to see the rest of my Lucid Air content, be sure to hit the subscribe button. And thank you again to Charged Automotive in Lincoln, Nebraska for making this video possible.